Okay, so I fell down and I want to share this with you because <laughs> you, never you never know when it's going to happen. It could happen to you. So you get shocked. You're lying there. I was with my dog and she was very concerned about me. Um, I'm glad she was there because it helped. Get up, dust yourself off, take some time. Hey, I couldn't get up right away. Now I have my foot elevated in ice on it and uh, I'm not able to walk too much on it, but take care of yourself because if it's still bad tomorrow, I'll go to the hospital. Um, when you're traveling and something happens and you're alarmed by it, I'm not alarmed actually, because you know what I was thinking? I was remembering when I was in Ladakh, India, Lay Ladakh, and um, I had fallen down Dharmasala the day after the Dalai Lama appeared, and I had a press pass, and I got amazing pictures of him. Um, what happened was I fell down, and I couldn't walk, so I was very grateful that I'd already seen him, and I'd already gotten the pictures. But you know what? <laughs> I still went to Ladakh because going to Ladakh is one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life. It's in the highest Himalayas and I've been there twice and I chose to go and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll hire a private driver. It's very cheap in India. And I found this guest house, Zen guest house. I'll have the link below. Shout out to those wonderful people. I can't remember your names, but I'll come back and visit you. Um, and stay with you. It was open on to a farm and you could hear this creek bubbling by and I thought well this is the most perfect place to recuperate that I've ever, I flew from Jammu to Leh. Wow, talk about airport security TSA going into the high Himalayas. Whoa. Um, I had to prove my professional credentials because they didn't like all the equipment I brought in. But <laughs> anyway, the point of this is that something can happen. So I did fall down today and I'm hoping it's just something that I can deal with. So I was remembering the last time I dealt with it, which was in India. And <laughs> I'm going to share with you, I went and got an x-ray. Yeah on this machine that looked so ancient and s suspicious. I was like, is that thing going to be able to tell? I'd never even seen an x-ray machine that old. Um, but the doctor or the operator or whoever he was said that my bone was cracked. So that was why it hurt when I walked. So I didn't walk for a week or two. And then I got a cane and then I went to the doc. And I'll tell you, I didn't change my plans. I mean, I'm glad I went because I found this Zen guest house and I really hope they're still there. There was a whole family and they rented out two rooms only. And one was by a babbling brook. And I just laid on the bed and I was so happy. The air is so clean and rarefied. I mean, I was so glad I came. And I'm not the type to hire private drivers, but you can in India because they're not so expensive. I mean, forget about doing it in Europe, I think, because just take the wonderful transportation. But I was lying there thinking, I'm so glad I did this. So you can have an accident and still cope, is what I'm telling you. Because into every life, there's going to be some health challenges that you have to deal with. And I have my dog, who I share with my son. And she's been a good companion to have in this, actually. And you can do it. I mean, there's more adventure to it. <laughs> so there's actually the possibility of more fun. I mean, those people that I stayed with, I wish I remembered their names. It was the parents, a new baby that was two or three, I think. I still call that new. And then a grandmother. And one night they said, we don't have availability for a room, but 
do you mind sleeping in the living room with the grandmother? And I actually was just fine sleeping in the living room with the grandmother and wanted to continue, but they said, no, <laughs> you should have the private room. And then they were so wonderful. And then I asked, could I cook in the kitchen? Very simple meals like boiling eggs, nothing fancy. And they said yes, and I ended up staying with them for, I don't know, maybe two weeks. And I actually started thinking about renting a place for a month or two. Maybe I'll still do that. Because it's very low cost. Okay, there's maybe a civil unrest situation, which never happened when I was there. Everything was fine. I even went to visit my nun friend who I met in Dharmasala McLeod Gange in the nunnery closest to the Dalai Lama's house that was doing a retreat and I got to stay there for a couple nights that was like heaven on earth and then they had this huge festival that was a dance festival Ney it was called Ney Ladakh village and all these people came from these remote locations with these fancy Outfits and costumes and musical instruments I'd never seen before. I mean, there were hundreds of people there at this monastery, nunnery, slash. I could have stayed there forever. I'm telling you, I had a nice little room. She got me a pretty good rate. I think it was like 15 bucks a night or something. He had to pay extra for food. Sometimes, you never know, with monastery food. <laughs> like one time I was in Nepal. And I stayed at a monastery, and I was like, this food is all white. It's white rice, white bread, white everything. And I was really sick of it after a couple nights. And then, guess what? I wandered around the corner, and there was all these monks excitedly putting peanut butter on their food, which I heartily jumped into immediately because peanut butter is one of my favorite foods. And no one said anything. I thought, oh, this is just out of sight, around the corner. We're eating the white rice, and they got peanut butter over here. Well, I ended up staying a couple more days once they found the peanut butter. I had my own room uh, in Nepal. Namo Buddha was the name of the monastery. So, listen... If you're ever at the point where you just want to give up on this whole rat race thing, just go to monasteries in Asia. There's so many that will just take you in. I mean, they don't even ask you for a donation. They expect you to know that, but you might be able to do something else, like working or like what I did was shooting videos and photographs, and you can do that, and you don't have to set it up ahead of time. So you just go to the monastery and take your chance. I mean, like, where... My first experience with a monastery <laughs> was an ashram in Rishikesh, India, right down the street from where the Beatles created the White Album, many songs in that, and it's pretty famous, right down the street. So I went with my son. I started with V. Anyway, we stood at this ashram. We stood out pretty late because we were helping these um, Indian guys from Delhi who had taken over a restaurant and were giving free food to the homeless people and giving them like a hundred rupees, which is, you know, like, I don't know, $5 at the time. So we helped them. They were really cute. And that was past the ashram hour to have the front door unlocked. <laughs> so we got back and the door was locked. The common door. So we thought, well, we're going to have to climb over the fence. So I thought, well, I'm the mother. I should go first. And all these dogs on the other side were barking at us. But we'd already made friends with the dogs. So once I was dangling my feet from the top of the, root of the fence, and they're like, oh, that's right. We've already played with you. So, I mean, it, it was a little scarier than that. <laughs> kind of downplaying it. And then Wolf came after me. And then we went to our room. It was the first time I'd ever flushed a toilet with a pail of water. But that trip changed my life. So if you ever just want to travel, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, just do 
monasteries and nunneries. You don't even have to call ahead. You just have to show up. Now, some of them don't. I've been turned down by a few places, a few monasteries. That, But only a few. Most of them took me in. <laughs> so I highly recommend it. I mean, honestly, it's very open. You know, not like a first world where you have to show a resume and all that. No, it's just you're here now. Okay, we'll take you. And you make a donation and that's it. So this is 10 minutes long, which is longer than I've had for a while. But this is important information. So keep traveling.